Yo, what's the crack? My happy face pullers, your host, T-Talk, certified personal trainer, trying to change people's lives for the better through strength and fitness. All right, so in today's video, I'm gonna tell you all about my first ever powerlifting competition. You definitely want to stick around because I'm gonna be dropping some valuable gems for you if you're thinking about squatting, benching, and deadlifting in a more competitive environment. And I'm also going to share the silly mistakes that I made during competition and what you can learn from those. But before I roll the video, all I'm asking for all this information I'm putting out here for free is your like. So if you haven't already, like the video and subscribe to the channel. Powerlifting is a strength sport that consists of three attempts at maximum weight on three lifts. Squats, bench press and deadlift. I think powerlifting as a sport fits very well into the strength-based style of training I've been focusing on for a few years now. After quite some time building a foundation through calisthenics and lifting weights, I feel like I've reached the point where I've gained enough experience and confidence to put my skills to the test in a more competitive stage. I had previously performed squats and deadlifts, so I was already familiar with those two exercises, but it's not like I trained these with the purpose of getting the highest one repetition max. As for the bench press, I already said in this channel that I made the mistake of not including this amazing upper body builder into my training until very recently. Sure, I messed around with it here and there, but I never really committed to getting stronger at it. But a few months ago, I decided to prioritize it, and I continue to do so to this day. In terms of the three lifts, the bench press took a central stage because this was the exercise I had practiced the least and because it is the most complex from a technique standpoint. For the other two exercises, I decided to compete with the low bar back squat over the high bar variation despite not having trained the former in months, if only because I wanted to lift the heaviest weight possible. And in doing so, I also realized how much better and natural the low bar variation feels for me particularly. And for the deadlift, I was going to do sumo on midday, but I pulled my left hamstring during training and after some rest, I had to switch to the conventional variation, which as it turned out, I could perform without any pain around that area. In sum, you might have to change things up as you go due to unexpected setbacks. So be flexible, work around your issues, and avoid doing things that could aggravate any existing problem. Now I'm going to describe the process leading up to the meet, and I'm also going to share three tactical tips you can implement into your training to make you feel more confident and better prepared before competition day. Let's go! At the start, my training didn't change significantly from what I was doing prior, but around eight weeks out from competition day, I started to adjust some things to make sure that my training was getting more specific to what I was gonna be tested on. The underlying principles of my training remained in place. The vast majority of my volume came from big compound movements while using progressive overload. However, as time passed by, I would favor intensity over volume as my go-to option for me to make things harder during training. A clear downside to this is that it takes longer to complete your workouts. As the weights go up week after week, your training sessions will tend to drag on because you'll need to rest longer in between sets. When you're training at such high intensities, you just need to be more patient. Another thing that had to change leading up to competition day was the degree of specificity in the exercises I was doing. If squatting, benching and deadlifting took up roughly half of my total volume at the start of this 8-week peaking block, by the end of it, these three exercises would account for almost 90% of what I was doing in the gym. Fantastic lifts I personally love had to be put aside gradually for the purpose of becoming more neurologically efficient in the squats, bench press and deadlift. In other words, you'll have to temporarily give up all the things in order to maximize your skill to produce maximum force in the specific levers and angles of the three competition lifts. Another thing that I would highly recommend people to do is to have a mock meet before competition day to try to reproduce the conditions of what you would expect later on. Come to the gym with the gear you are planning to use on meet day, 
only to perform the nine competitive lifts you're gonna be tested on. Three squats, three bench presses, and three deadlifts. The goal here is to have a better sense of how fatiguing these could be for you, what weights you are going to choose for the meet, and also to practice the exercises in circumstances as similar as what you are likely to encounter on competition day. Ideally, you would want to have a mock meet one or two weeks before your powerlifting competition as part of your peaking phase. This was the easiest thing for me if I'm completely honest with you. I signed up for the under 74 kilogram category, the lightest on the man's side. I was very confident I would make weight because after many years finding out what works for me in terms of nutrition, I feel like I have a very good control over how much I weigh. My weight had stayed very consistent around 74-75 kg for the most part of 2019, so I only needed to make little changes to be under 74 kg for competition day. In any case, only 5 days before the meet, I stopped eating my bananas with peanut butter. I went from eating 3 bananas a day to only 2 and I added an extra 15 to 20 minute walk in the evening. That was it. Very small things as you can see. I removed around 300 calories of my food intake and I burned an extra 100 calories with low intensity cardio. More than enough to put me on a slight caloric deficit for 5 days straight. And on top of all this, I decided not to drink any water before stepping on the scale on midday. So at the end, I competed at officially 72.6 kg. Anyhow, in case you didn't know, once you make the weight cut, you can load up on carbs to fill your energy levels and drink as much water as you need to stay hydrated. In my particular case, I went for carbs and I also had two cups of black coffee. Speaking of caffeine, I stopped drinking coffee five days before the meet with the goal of regaining a more effective kick. Let me first make clear that this powerlifting meet wasn't a competition at a national level or anything like that. It was more of a local thing and it was rather small, but the overall experience was great. A local club called Masque Fuerza, in English more than strength, organized it. I am going to include their link to their Facebook and Instagram accounts as well as their YouTube channel in the description of this video, so you can go ahead and check them out. Yeah. Alright, let's talk about the warm-up and the fact that you might have to deal with unexpected factors. For example, you might have to do your warm-up with other athletes in a cramped space or you might have to go for bigger jumps in weights because of time constraints. Every powerlifting competition will be unique, of course, and this could vary greatly from meet to meet, but it's likely that you will have to do things differently from how you do it in your training. Be okay with not having absolute control of all these different external factors such as noise, space, equipment, etc. Just try to make the most of the warm-up and stay focused. As I mentioned already, every competitor is meant to perform 3 lifts per exercise, so you'll be stepping on the stage 9 times in total. I would highly advise you to come to the meet at least with an opening weight in mind for each exercise, see how the first lift feels, and then decide what your weights for the second and third lifts will be. In any case, the opening weight for my first squat was 105 kg, it felt pretty good, so I went for 120 kg for the second one. It felt very smooth as well, good speed out of the bottom and no sticking points. So I decided to try to get a PR in my last squat. And this is what happened. <laughs> I'm usually a very quiet athlete when I train, but I guess this is what happens in the heat of the moment. The bench press was a whole different game. It was quite the learning experience for me personally, as you're about to see. This is what happens when you develop bad habits in training that you internalize and then repeat over and over. And even though the judges were kind enough to let me know what the problem was, that I had to wait for the command to rock the bar, 
as you'll see, my second bench was also a missed lift because I lifted my neck slightly and you're not supposed to do that, which I didn't know. And what is worse, I repeated the previous mistake and racked the weights without waiting for the command. Mm. I ended up putting myself into a tricky situation and I'm the only one to blame for all this mess. So at this point, pressure is on, man. My third and last bench press was my last chance to get a valid lift. So I think I went over the sequence of movements in my mind like a thousand times before coming back to the stage. Make sure to learn from this silly mistake of mine and train your bench following competition rules. If you can, have someone acting as a judge giving you the commands. And lastly, the deadlift. My opening weight was 145 kg. What I wanted to accomplish with this first lift was to fill the competition bar. Last year, I made the decision to train my deadlift exclusively with hook grip and I've learned over time that every bar feels very different, so I wanted to have a taste for it. With that in mind, I decided to pull a bit heavier for my second deadlift. I knew at this moment that I would still have room for more weight, but I also wanted to have some energy left for my last lift of the entire competition. So I decided to go for 170 kg at the end, and this is the heaviest I had ever attempted to pull off the floor with a hook grip. Man, look at the speed of the bar, no sticking points, everything felt amazing. In hindsight, it's clear that I could have added more weight to the bar, but this is one of the things you can only learn by competing and becoming more experienced. Alright, my competition total was 382.5 kg and I can't wait to compete again at the end of 2020 to beat this number. This local powerlifting meet was a very positive experience overall. Not only did I draw important lessons as to what to focus on in the future, but it was also a great opportunity to gain experience in a competitive environment. And although we, the competitors, were technically rivals, I felt nothing but a very supportive atmosphere. Everyone was cheering everyone in every lift and you could feel the respect we had for each other. After all, we all have in common that we love strength training and have a good time lifting heavy ass weights. So hopefully this video helps you understand what to expect in a powerlifting meet if you ever decide to compete in one. From an outsider's perspective, a powerlifting meet could be a very intimidating thing, especially if you've never done it before. But in reality, it's nothing further from the truth. So ditch your fears and sign up. The only thing you should be scared of is your future self regretting not having enjoyed this fantastic experience. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, why are you waiting for? Smash the like button! Also, please subscribe to the channel and click on the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. Alright guys and girls, I'll see you next week. In the meantime, squat, bench, dead.